A little bit of history on our part. Um, so the European Studies Program in the Ateneo was, was established in 1998. Um, and it wasn't until 2013 that um, the director at that time, uh, um, Dr. Mehmet Padaran, um, and I went to a, uh, a, world, uh, a European Studies Conference in Baltimore. Uh, where they actually had a talk on uh, applying for Jean Monnet grants, somewhat, somewhat like this one. Um, and the speakers talked about how you would go about the application, what it entails, the different kinds of, um, of grants that, that are funded, uh, sort of like the information that I gave to you as well. Um, and so we applied for one. And in 2016, we were uh, we were lucky to get one. So we applied in 2015. Uh, it took us two years to prepare the uh, the application, uh, part, partly because we were we were still trying to figure out uh, how we would formulate the how we would write up everything, how we how we would formulate our ideas. Um, we got it in 2016. Uh, this was the Jean Monnet modules. So at that time, it was for the offering of four different courses or four different subjects on European integration. Uh, so that got funded by, by the European uh, Commission. Uh, so we were lucky uh, in that sense. And then in 2020, um, we, or in 2019 last year, we applied for another one. This is a Jean Monnet project. Uh, so rather than teaching uh, classes in the university, the, the project this time is about publicizing uh, knowledge about the European Union. We, um, we, we managed to get a grant. Uh, the, the approval just came last month. So we were fortunate to get that. We were happy to, to get that news. Um, so that, that's generally our, our, our history with, with regard to this Jean Monnet um, <clears throat> grant. Okay, so um, the steps that we had to take, I, I just thought I'd show you this. And this is um, not really um, the official uh, steps that you will encounter, but well, technically they are, but what what you see here are the steps as we saw them, uh, because there are uh, steps that you have to take. But what we wanted, what I'm trying to show here also is uh, what what aspects of the steps can be challenging. And so, if you go about uh, applying for on your own, uh, here you will see. Um, I guess you can learn from our experience uh, things that we found difficult, things that um, things that may be um, challenging at the start. But once you get the hang of, of the application, it's actually quite doable. So uh, usually it begins with the account creation uh, through the EACEA website. Um, that that is actually uh, an institute uh, a subgroup within the European Commission that handles all of these applications and it's done online. Uh, the making of the account can be quite tedious because they, well, at the start, they'll just ask for information like you're making any account. But once you get into the verification process, uh, they will ask for official documents, which you may have to ask from the central administration of your university, depending on how your organization works. So uh, that if, if that is something that can be challenging, uh, it's best to look at what they will ask for in advance and just request it right away so that you have it. Um, so once that's done, uh, once you've made the account, uh, you you can then go to the, you can Google um, the Jean Monnet calls. Usually um, the calls for applications are around now, actually, October, November, um, and they're due by February. I don't know if the dates will change given the, the, the situation with the coronavirus, but um, as usually that's how it's done. So the, the, the announcement is made around October uh, and you submit around February and then the results usually appear July of the next year. Um, so when you submit the application, uh, as I wrote here, um, there's, there's an annex. Each, each application usually, there's a form, a PDF that um, it, it's the first time I've ever encountered this. And if you, if you don't mind, I will speak a little bit frankly. Uh, it's my first time to encounter a PDF that required you to have internet access in order to use it. Uh, it's a very fancy, uh, high-tech kind of PDF where uh, anything you type there is basically uh, transmitted uh, directly to, to the, to, it, it's, it's transmitted directly to the system. So. Uh, it was my first time to encounter a PDF like that. Uh, and if you apply, this is something that you will you will be dealing with as well. Um, so 
you'll need internet while while filling out this form. Uh, usually attached to that are um, two two important things. So one is what is called the budget annex, which uh, they will usually tell you where you can download that, and it's it's another uh, it's an Excel file, but it's a a fixed Excel file where you can you'll be asked to enter certain details that um, it'll determine how much how many man hours go into your into your application, how much funding you're eligible for. Uh, there are computations for that there. Um, and also uh, along with that is the, the annex. And the annex is the more tedious part of this, of, of the application process, because the annex is where they will ask you to give very, very specific details. Um, and the annex can be quite long. If I remember correctly, um, for our Jean Monnet module, grant the the annex was over 10 pages long it was single spaced um and for the projects around the same so there's quite a lot of writing there's a lot of um the, yeah but the the reason why they do this is because they want to make sure that you've thought about all of its different parts and and there that you you can you, the idea is to show that you can implement this uh should they give you the grant uh, so yes, I mentioned supporting documents already, but uh, yeah. So some of the some of the more difficult ones, uh, at least for in our part to to get, were um, the the the, the um, official SEC registration, for example, of our university. We had we had to submit that at the start. Um, we had to get the bank details of our of, of our university, which. Uh, which you know we had to go through a, a, a whole administrative uh, chain to to get that information. So it depends on on how your university works, but it's again just go uh, collect what is needed, submit what is needed, um, and and it usually it, it's I find that it's worth it to to go through. Um, there there it's basically they just need to verify all of this information prior to considering giving you the grant. Um, <clears throat> so. The implementation, we're over here, uh, this middle yellow part. The implementation is actually the, the easiest part because you've done all of the thinking and all you all you then have to do is just do it. Um, so depending on what you are doing or what you propose to do, uh, it's just a matter of implementation. Uh, and then usually after one year, uh, we're at the upper right uh, yellow part now of my slide. Uh, it's the interim report, so they'll ask uh, about the progress. Has anything, has everything gone to, according to plan, or is are things delayed in for for any reason? Uh, you you explain that there, uh, and finally the final report, where uh, they where you just say you evaluate what you did. Did everything go well? Was there anything that changed from the original plan? And they'll ask you to justify that. Uh, it's always best to, once you have one of these grants, to document all of the activities associated with it. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's um, that's that's usually helpful, right? So, uh, so my next slide is actually this. Uh, so just really some final thoughts to to leave you guys with. Um, and yeah, and and really just. If um if you feel that you are ready or you have an interesting project that you'd like funding for, uh, please apply. Uh, it's 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 really worth it. It um, not only is it a way to, it, I mean the yes the money is there, but also uh, it's a way to gauge your uh, the level of your your e European studies or EU expertise um, because usually you'll be these these applications are vetted by by specialists and and. Um, peers from from around the world, so it's it's um, it's also a way of benchmarking your 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 teaching, your research, um, and and the kinds of projects you do. Right. So yeah, um, I strongly recommend that that everyone, uh, if you if you have uh, an interesting uh, idea uh, for a module, chair, etc., uh, go go for it. Uh, apply. Right. So um, yeah, just uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to to chat. Um, type it into the chat. But if you if you just want to send me an email, that's fine. You'll see it here, um, or or just contact the Athenaeum European Studies Facebook page. Um, but apart of, apart from that, um, yeah, I'll I'll just quickly check if there's any questions. But 
yeah, if, if not, uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, the organizer is telling me that uh, it's almost time to wrap up. Uh, but yeah, feel free to get in touch. Thank you so much.